October has arrived here in the state of Kentucky. It is cool, crisp, and windy at Richmond, Kentucky's Roy Kitt Stadium, where tonight the third-ranked Colonels of Eastern Kentucky will play host to number six, Georgia Southern. In the 13 years there has been a Division I AA in college football, these two schools respectively have won six national championships, four for Georgia Southern and two for Eastern Kentucky. Hi, everybody. I'm Randy Smith along with Sonny Randall with the broadcast of tonight's game, which should be a great one, the two flagship AA programs. Randy, no question, these two teams get together. Anything could happen. It should be one of the finest football games to be played in the country this year in 1AA. For Georgia Southern to come to Richmond and win, what will they have to do? They'll have to be awfully good early, that's for sure, and certainly their quarterback will have to be good, uh, Charles Bostic. Uh, as far as the uh, big plays are concerned, they don't want to give them up because if they do, they'll get behind and they don't feel like they can catch up that well. Kicking game has to be solid. As far as the Eastern Kentucky Colonels are concerned, their quarterback, Joel Crenshaw, has to have a quick start. He's a little bit hurt, but he's going to have to play hurt. They'll have to have their passing game complement their run uh, to keep things honest uh, as far as the defense is concerned. Uh, turnovers, uh, they don't want any turnovers here this evening because uh, they could be in a world of trouble. You know, you don't win as many games as these two schools have without talent. There's some great talent on the field tonight. No question there's some folks out here could play for anybody in the country. Uh, first for Georgia Southern, their outstanding quarterback, Charles Bostic. We mentioned him at the outset of the show. Great speed and quickness. Can make it happen, and I guarantee you he'll get them on the board. Defensively, uh, Steve Bosoletti, uh, just an outstanding football player. Already just two sacks uh, shy of the all-time record uh, at Georgia Southern. As far as Eastern Kentucky is concerned, we talked about Crenshaw. He has a bad shoulder, but uh, he needs a quick start uh, to, uh, well, to stay in the football game. On defense, uh, David Watkins, uh, just an outstanding football player. He'll make big plays for him on defense. He'll have to uh, to keep him in the football game. Should be a great one. Number three, Eastern Kentucky, sixth-ranked Georgia Southern. Coming up live here on Sports South. Stay with us. We'll be back with more in just one moment. We're back at Roy Kidd Stadium. It should be a great one. Eastern Kentucky hosting Georgia Southern. You look at the weather conditions, overcast skies, 55 degrees. There is a breeze. No rain now, but there was some rain earlier today. Mike Keith is roaming the sidelines. He'll be reporting from down there. And Mike, what about the field conditions for tonight's game? Randy, you know, every single game is a test. And for David Williams and the grounds crew here at Hangar Field, it's been a real test. But the field was resodded. They put in a new drainage system. The field is dry. It rained here all day, so they've done a great job. The wind's blowing up where you guys are. There is no wind on the field right now. And as Sonny mentioned about Joey Crenshaw, the Colonel quarterback, and his shoulder problem, he apparently has two series to get it going, or he may be pulled for Doobie Burkhalter. Randy? All right, thank you, Mike. It should be a great one. We'll be back with a kickoff of tonight's game. Georgia Southern and Eastern Kentucky live from Richmond. We'll be back in just a moment. We're back live at Roy Kidd Stadium in Richmond, Kentucky. Randy Smith, Sonny Randall, and Mike Keith with you. Georgia Southern has won the toss. They have deferred their decision till the second half, so Eastern Kentucky will receive. Back deep. Number 21, that's Leon Brown. And on the year, he has returned seven kicks, an average of 21 yards per return. Georgia Southern will kick it off to start it. David Cool's kick fielded by Brown at about the three. And the kicker, David Cool, among those making the stop on Brown. But about a 30-yard return by Brown will put the ball in play first for Eastern Kentucky. Looks like it might be a fumble. And it was. And Georgia Southern, I believe, got the ball. It was hard to tell because there was such a crowd over there, and the official really didn't give a signal so anybody could see it. Not a good start for Eastern Kentucky after the fine return by Leon Brown of about 30 yards. So we put it in play. Georgia Southern goes on offense. We talked about Charles Bostic, the quarterback. He's a redshirt freshman, number seven. He opens in the flex bone. Two wide receivers. Inside the handoff. Goes to the fullback. That's Lester Eford. Ernest Thompson, the nose guard, a senior, 257 pounds. In on the stop 
for Eastern Kentucky. And a penalty marker on the play. Sonny kind of sloppy play early. I think both teams want this uh, so badly that uh, it's affected the way they're going to start. And uh, it doesn't surprise me because it is so important. Being a big, big game like this, you figure both teams will be on edge. And I think that's what we're looking at right here at the outset. Illegal procedure against Georgia Southern. It'll be first down at 15. We'll move the ball back to about the 36 yard line. Here are your starting lineups. Quarterback is Charles Bosick. The split ends, they have two. Daryl Belser, number 80. Terrence Sorrell, number 88. Center is Rusty Parrish. There you look at the offensive line for Georgia Southern. Bostic, the quarterback. First down and 15. Bostic with some running room inside the 30 down to about the 26 yard line. Nice run that time by the quarterback. We talked about Charles Bostic's outstanding speed and quickness and we saw it right there. Uh, he kept the ball on a speed option. There's a good shot of Bostic. As we look at the starting defensive front, a five man front for Eastern Kentucky, two linebackers. Eric Jackson, one of the better athletes on this Eastern Kentucky team. And there's the secondary. And a fine one, a veteran unit. Inside handoff, Eford inside the 10, still on his feet. First down and goal, Georgia Southern. A little reverse action. By the quarterback. Watch the reverse. Quick give to the fullback. Eakert, he does the rest. Well, when you're in the secondary and those defensive backs are having to make the big play, you know you're in trouble. He breaks clean. Glenn Williams in the secondary finally got him down. It's first down and goal, Georgia Southern at the three. Eakert again to the one. Did he get in? Not. I don't think he made it. It'll be second down and goal from about the one yard line. Down here, nothing out of the ordinary. Going to be power football. They'll stick it right at the Eastern Kentucky. 13 08, clock moving just underway, and Georgia Southern taking advantage of an Eastern Kentucky fumble on the kickoff, threatening, knocking at the door. Bostic, Eford is stopped. He's going to be stopped shy of that goal line again. It's third and goal. Welcome to Kentucky. Up front, Eastern Kentucky. I mean, they're really stout down here. They're getting a the test early. We see again a power formation to the right side. And there's so much displacement up front, there's nowhere for the back to run. The hit was made by Wilkins, number 89. An outstanding defensive end for Eastern Kentucky. Bostic. Full house in that backfield. Eifert into the end zone for the touchdown. No correction. That's number five for Georgia Southern. That's Albert Huntley, a backup quarterback. Albert Huntley, he was supposed to be an A back. You'll see it. Uh, Huntley just goes airborne over the top. Huntley runs as the number three quarterback. He was in there at one of the A back slots. They talked about using him early. I didn't know we'd see him this early, but he came in and acted like he played a back all his life. David Cool is 10 out of 10 in extra points for Georgia Southern. There's a whistle and penalty markers go everywhere. A little bit of movement up front. Illegal procedure is not going to matter. Georgia Southern is in front 6 nothing with 12 23 to go as Huntley goes over from the one. False start. On the offense, five-yard penalty replay. They'll do it again. As Cool will attempt to make it 11 of 11 extra points for Georgia Southern. Cool probably likes the challenge. Don Norton will hold number six. Glenn Williams finally chased out of bounds. He could have picked up a couple of points, but nevertheless, it's six nothing Georgia Southern. And a lot of excitement early, but we felt it would be that way. 12 23 to go in the first quarter. Georgia Southern six, Eastern Kentucky nothing. 
Let's take another look at that touchdown. As you look at Georgia Southern, 6 0 over Eastern Kentucky early as Huntley goes up and over. Georgia Southern will kick it off. It'll be David Cool, number three. Leon Brown, who fumbled the last time after a nice 30 yard return, will try it again for the Colonels of Eastern Kentucky. Colonels have won 12 Ohio Valley Conference championships. Including last year. This is Brown at about the eight yard line. Got to the 23, and the Colonels will put it in play. First down and 10 from the 23 yard line. Here we see the, the blocked extra point. Boy, I'll tell you one thing you're talking about getting up. Randy Wardlow, he really got off the ground. Orlo's a defensive end for Eastern Kentucky. 6'3", 198, but as you mentioned, he got up. There you see the numbers for Joey Crenshaw. He's the quarterback, the senior transfer from the University of Kentucky. Split backfield. The quick screen to Vince Ware. Ware, with a little bit of running room, crosses the 30. It'll be a pickup of about eight yards. Coach Kidd was anxious to let uh, Crenshaw enjoy a little success. Just a quick screen. There you look at the Eastern Kentucky backs and receivers. Crenshaw the quarterback. Ware eight and McCollum six are the wideouts. You look at the interior. Carl Satterley number 74 a real pro prospect. He's about 290. Second down about two. Crenshaw hands off first man through. For Eastern Kentucky, that's number 32, Tim Lester, averaging about four and a half yards a carry, and he gets the first down. Georgia Southern defensive to front. Steve Busoletti has been injured. He's back. He's the all-time sack leader, or has 21 and a half sacks career-wise. The three linebackers as they run the 4-3. There you see the defensive backs for Georgia Southern starting lineups tonight. 11.20 to go, first quarter, 6 0 Georgia Southern. High formation. This is Lester spinning away, crossing the 35. Jim Mutimer makes the stop for the Eagles. With Lester, you better wrap him up, and I mean with both arms, because he doesn't go down easy. He'll bounce off tackles all night long. Just a power football off tackle. Lester bounces outside. You can see, you better wrap him up. There's Lester at 291 yards rushing in one game. And one of the other guys, Marcus Thomas, who we'll see a lot of, had 300 in one game. Second and six, Lester spinning again. Got to the 40. It'll be third down. Georgia Southern swarms on defense. You won't see one jersey on the ball. Most of the night, Randy, you'll see five or six. Five plays, 31 yards, took them two and a half minutes. Huntley, the backup quarterback, gets the score on the one-yard run. As you look at Roy Kidd, they've had only one losing season here in Eastern Kentucky under Roy Kidd. That was in 1964, his first season. They won three, lost five, and won, and they haven't had a loser since. That's the reason they named the stadium after him. <laughs> you win that many, that happens. Lester goes in motion. Third down, Crenshaw's pass way over the head of Vincent Ware, number eight. Actually, fourth down. Actually, Crenshaw threw that one into coverage. Uh, Georgia Southern rolled to the strong side. That could have gone the other way. It'll be fourth down for the Colonels. They'll punt the football. Brian Barrett is the punter. He's averaging just under 40 yards a kick. And back deep will be Oglesby for Georgia Southern. Gets the kick away, high and deep. He's got some room. Oglesby crosses the 30. Nice return that time by Oglesby. We have 9.42 to go in the first quarter. Georgia Southern with an impressive start. They lead Eastern Kentucky 6-0. And we'll be right back. Georgia Southern has now gone 50 consecutive games, Sonny, without being shut out. That is remarkable. They've also won 38 of their last 44. As you look at Tim Stowers, 
in his second year. Not many coaches win a national championship at that age in their first year of coaching. When you have to replace a legend like Tim had to do, I tell you what, uh, that's uh, that's kind of a tough act to follow. Yeah, Eric dude. Russell was just unbelievable for so many years. And you look across the way and you talked about Roy Kidd earlier. I mean, they're just two exceptional football coaches on these sidelines tonight. Well, a lot of uh, baseball fans in our neck of the woods very happy today. If you're an Atlanta Braves fan, the Braves won, the Dodgers lost, so the Braves are National League West champions for the first time since 1982. Two of the four divisional winners finished last last year. Big turnaround. Looked like a mix-up. Bostic got back to the line, maybe a yard gain. And that'll be it. Randy Wardlow got the stop on Bostic, who almost wiggled away. He made a, a bad situation a pretty good one. When you've got the athletic ability that Bostic does, he can turn a bad play into a good one, and I mean do it in a hurry. Second down nine, 917 to go. Out of the flex bone, Bostic slapped, knocked to the ground by Chad Bratsky, number 77. He really interrupted that play. Bratsky got excellent penetration up front to the right of the screen here. Bratsky comes down hard and knocks Bostic back in the backfield. You've got no chance there. Here we see it again. Reads the dive, pulls the ball out, but Brasky knocks him uh, about three or four yard loss. Great displacement up front that time. Sometimes it takes a great defensive stand and a play like the one Bratsky made to fire the team up. Eight and a half minutes to go. Boston in trouble. Down he goes. Back at the 24 yard line. Greg McKee. Now with his fourth sack, also Ernest tops it in there for East Street, Kentucky. Bostic wanted to throw back that time. You can see him sprinting left, but wanted to throw back to the right. Had no chance, none whatsoever. Greg McKee has now his fourth sack as Georgia Southern will punt. Back deep for Eastern Kentucky will be Bird. Feels it at the 37. Got a block and stepped out of bounds just shy of the midfield stripe. 7.51 to go. First quarter, good field position for the Colonels. When we come back, they trail Georgia Southern 6 to zip. Six nothing your score. Georgia Southern, 7.51 to go in the first quarter. Boy, it's a, turned into a beautiful night for football as you look at one of the two banners flying above Roy Kidd Stadium for the two national championships won by this fine program. Crenshaw, the quarterback, the senior. Pitches back to Thomas, crosses midfield. Nick Davis made the stop from his middle linebacker spot for Georgia Southern. Thomas running the toss sweep into the wide side, uh, cuts it back up inside. Nothing outside, but this guy, when he gets a seam or a crack, he'll give you fits. Second down six from about the 48-yard line. Clock moving, 7.25 to go, first quarter. Kenny McCullum comes to the left. Where to the right? Crenshaw looking, going deep over the middle. It's incomplete. Just a little bit ahead of Dwayne Woods, the intended receiver, from the tight end position. They got man coverage in the secondary. Tried to take advantage of the tight end. It'll be third down, about six for Eastern Kentucky now, with 7.07 to go first quarter. The Colonels, as we mentioned earlier, beat Georgia Southern 42-34 last year in Statesboro. That snapped a 38-game home field winning streak for Georgia Southern. Big play here, third and six. Pressure on Crenshaw. Down he goes back at the 47. That'll be a loss of about five. Shane Maxwell from his linebacker spot got in there, and it'll be fourth down, Eastern Kentucky. Georgia Sutton, a little blitz here from the backside. Crenshaw has no chance. He doesn't even get set up. 
Looking at it from ground level out of the end zone. Maxwell does a, a big number on it. Oglesby feels the punt inside the 10. Tremendous punt run that time by Eastern Kentucky and Georgia Southern gets it in poor field position with 632 to go in the first quarter of play. There's Roy Kidd. He's talking to Crenshaw. You mentioned earlier that Crenshaw had to have a good start. Eastern Kentucky's not moving and we may see the sophomore Doobie Burkhoff or rather the junior at quarterback who has played some this year when Crenshaw was injured. I would think one more series and if nothing happens then uh, as you say Doobie will be on the field. Georgia Southern with a six nothing lead taking advantage of an early Eastern Kentucky turnover. Fumble Bostic fumble Eastern Kentucky gets it back inside the five yard line. David Wilkins who already has one big defensive play pounces on the ball. We talked about Wilkins uh, at the outset of the program. He's a big play guy. It's Sir. at the four. It was mishandled. Whether it was the center of the quarterback, we can't be real, real sure. Wilkins, he was all over the ball. We see it again. Tough to say whether the quarterback Bostic pulled out too quick or not. But you could see a lot of maroon jerseys on the ball. Wilkins came up with it. Big opportunity for the Colonels with 6.29 to go first quarter. Crenshaw, Lester is banged and stopped at the line of scrimmage. Nothing there for Eastern Kentucky. Let's go down to the field here once again. Mike Keith, Mike. Randy, we expected to see Doobie Burkhalter sometime here in the first half at quarterback. Obviously, Crenshaw is still playing, and Burkhalter hasn't even warmed up yet. So it looks like Crenshaw, if he can stick it in the hole here with Eastern Kentucky, may be able to keep on going. But there is a battle for the Colonel's quarterback spot, no doubt. Second down goal from the five. Lester actually lost about a step. High formation behind Crenshaw. Lester again around the right side. Touchdown, Eastern Kentucky. This is great individual effort by Tim Lester. It's not that well blocked up front, but Lester does the rest. Here we see it. You can see Lester bounces back outside. Nothing inside. You can see Lester, he smells the end zone. Does what he has to do to get in there. Todd Duffy is 12 out of 12 in extra points. In fact, he's at 55 straight. 56 straight as Duffy adds the extra. And Eastern Kentucky has taken the lead at 7 to 6 with 543 to go in the first quarter. Colonels take the lead, taking advantage of a turnover. We'll be right back. Eastern Kentucky leading the football game 7-6 to six on a four-yard drive on three plays a moment ago following the fumble recovery. While we have a moment, we want to remind you that the announcers for this game have been contracted for host creative communications. Any use we broadcast or other transmission of this game without the written consent of the Sports South Network and host creative communications prohibited. Well, they left it laying on the ground. Brown made a mistake, picked it up, and has got good yardage. Penalty markers fly. Ball may have been loose. And again, we see Sonny a little sloppy play on the kickoff. Let's take a look at that touchdown again by Tim Lester. Lester, as I say, nothing inside, just bounces outside. Does the rest on his own. Not a whole lot to say about it other than a great effort Six, by right. an outstanding back. Clipping, during the run back, half the distance to the goal, first down, White. Poor field position again for Georgia Southern. A moment ago, they had it inside the 10 and lost it on a bad snap from center. And Eastern took it right in for the score. And it's at the three yard line. Four yard drive, two plays, 46 seconds. This is not where you want to start uh, your drive. Huntley in motion, handoff to the big fullback, that's Eford, and he crosses the five to about the six. Just a straight dive out of the uh, flex ball. Don't think you'll see any option or anything fancy down here. 
don't want to happen what happened last time if you're Tim Sauer. Second down, six after the four yard pickup by Eford. Huntley in motion. Eford again, straight ahead to the 10. It'll be third down. For this broadcast, some of the crew and staff were provided accommodations by Save In. It's a new chain with new options for the economy conscious traveler. Save Ins are where travelers stop to enjoy full service amenities and economy prices. You've tried other hotels and paid extras for things like Continental Breakfast Buffet, local phone calls, and coffee delivered to your door with a wake up call. Then try Save Ins, where these extras are totally free. Call the nearest Save In, 1 800 441 9888. Boston. Third down, crosses the 10. It's going to be shy of the first down, and Georgia Southern will have to punt the football. It'll be fourth down. Bostic on a speed option. Goes to the short side of the field, but not enough for the first down. Glenn Williams made the stop for Eastern Kentucky, so with 4-12 to go in the first quarter, Georgia Southern will punt the football. spiral fair catch made by Eastern Kentucky at uh, just inside the 45 yard line the punt was by Don Norton and the fair catch taken by Eddie Byrd so good field position for Eastern Kentucky as they put it in play with a seven to six lead Norton has really got a strong leg and they felt like coming in that uh, he'd be a guy that could get him out of trouble and maybe pin the Colonels back during the evening. Crenshaw still in at quarterback. Be McCollum in the slot left for Eastern Kentucky. Crenshaw falls, hands it to Marcus Thomas, a knee hit at about the line of scrimmage. He might have gotten a yard. Paul Sickley from his linebacker spot in on the stop for Georgia Southern. Lead, just a simple lead. Play with the base block in up front. Nothing fancy. I think Eastern Kentucky feels like that they can run at Georgia Southern uh, without having to do a whole lot of uh, fancy stuff. Georgia Southern has given up over 330 yards per game passing the football, so they might throw it as well. They've also picked off 11 passes. Crenshaw, second down, throws over the middle, caught. Marcus Brown with a first down inside the 40-yard line. Marcus Thomas, rather. Gets the first down for Eastern Kentucky. Shane Maxwell made the stop for Georgia Southern. Crenshaw, Thomas just a little check route underneath the linebackers. Thomas with his speed and quickness. You can see him underneath the backers. Gets excellent yardage. Ware comes to the left side. <laughs> Crenshaw throwing again. I believe he made that catch. Leon Brown makes the reception, or did he? Maybe he caught the ball. The pass was thrown behind him by Crenshaw, but he managed to hang on. If he had that, that's just a three-step drop. And actually threw it into coverage. Had he not thrown it behind him, he wouldn't have caught it. That was a pickup of seven. It'll be second and three as we move the football inside the 35. Thomas down inside the 30 yard line. It'll be another first down for the Colonels. Marcus Thomas, I'll tell you what, he's a big time back. Again, he bounces. Oldsby finally got him down. Here we see it uh, again. Starts up inside, bounces outside. Thomas likes to use that speed and quickness is the reason you see him bounce it outside. You don't see anything inside. He knows he can do the. He can use his athletic ability when he gets outside. 5'11", junior running back. First down at the 26. Delay. Thomas. Did a great job, lost the football, but they're going to rule it down. The second down for Eastern Kentucky at the 25. 
Actually, the ball was blown dead. Just excellent second effort. A little counter tray action back up inside. When you're going for that extra yardage, of course, when there's so much uh, penetration, you can see the ball pop loose, but it was blown dead. Gain of two after all that. Second down, eight with a minute to go, first quarter. Long count, Crenshaw, hands inside, Lester inside the 20 to the 18. Paul Sickley makes the stop for Georgia Southern. Coming right at you. Again, bouncing outside. I'll tell you one thing, they don't have to do anything fancy right now the way they're knocking the Georgia Southern people off the ball. You'll see some movement right now from the Georgia Southern defense. They're not going to stay in a base defense. Third down three, 18 seconds to go in the first quarter for Eastern Kentucky. Believe he's checking. Crenshaw, the keeper, might have gotten a yard, but it'll be fourth down for Eastern Kentucky. Nick Davis and Michael Berry team to make the stop. We're going to take a break as the first quarter comes to a close with your score. Eastern Kentucky 7, Georgia Southern 6. It'll be fourth down. The football resting right on the Georgia Southern 20-yard line. Fourth and about four for a first down. Looks like the Colonels are going to go for it. Well, it's early and they're ahead by one. Fourth and six. No field goal. Gonna kick it. It'll be a 37 yard attempt right down the middle by Todd Duffy. He's hit three out of seven. There's a fake. Didn't work. Georgia Southern will get the ball at about the 23 yard line. <laughs> Did not fool Rodney Oglesby as he was there to help make the stop for Georgia Southern. 1456 just underway in the second quarter. Big break for Georgia Southern. They'll have it first and 10 when we come back. Mike Keith back on the field. The irony of that play, Mark Giles, number 10, is the guy who makes the stop. Giles clearly from field level would have blocked that kick. That would have been the ninth block kick of his career, Randy. He was there. It'll be first down, a big play nevertheless for Georgia Southern. Bostic wants to throw. Sprints out. Keeps it, goes out of bounds. Picked up about two. They call this defense the patrol, as we have a player shaken up down on the side that's number 25 Daryl Hopkins one of the slot backs for Georgia Southern the patrol has recovered eight or rather 11 fumbles and have picked off six passes this year actually 12 fumbles now counting the one in the first quarter which led to their score there's Daryl Hopkins one of the a backs uh, tell you one thing they don't want to lose him uh, if they do they got to go to a true freshman that would be Shafton Fraley number 12 who plays behind him I believe he's going to be okay, but he's going to come out for a few moments. That was a gain of two by Bostic around the right side. It'll be second down eight. Seven six, your score. Eastern Kentucky with a lead. Hand off to Lester Eifert. He got about two more. It'll be third down. Eford will just a dive. Right now, defensively, both teams, as you see Tim Sowers, Coach Stiles, he, I'll tell you one thing, they, they felt like coming in defensively, and you see Coach Kidd across the way, they felt like both defenses were playing actually better than the offense. Third down six. Time of possession, pretty even, even though Eastern has had it more. Bostic in trouble. Down he goes, back at the 23-yard line. 
Chad Bratsky's in there for the second time. And David Wilkins, who has been everywhere for Eastern Kentucky. Just a little hesitation. Wilkins is the one that makes the play. The wind is blowing across the field. It might be a little bit more than a light breeze. At least it feels that way in this press box. Norton will stand at the 10. Fair catch called for and made by Eastern Kentucky's Bird. And we will have a timeout. 13 29 to go in the first quarter. Colonels have the ball and a 7 to 6 lead when we come back. 7 6. Colonels have the lead and the ball. And it will be first down and 10. Just shy of the Colonel 35 yard line. Crenshaw still in there at quarterback for the third ranked Colonels of Coach Roy Kidd. The Colonels are three and one. Only loss came to Louisville. They've already won three Ohio Valley Conference games, including a big one here two weeks ago against Middle Tennessee State. Crenshaw, quick out, caught by Kenny McCullough. His sixth reception of the year. It'll be second down. Crenshaw checked at the line of scrimmage that time. Came back to McCullough on just a quick out. Very high percentage type play. And he gets excellent yardage. Very easy to tell when he checks. It's at the 39. Second down, a little less than six. Crenshaw keeps, got good yardage, across the 40 to about the 44. Shane Maxwell makes the stop for Georgia Southern. It'll be third and a little less than a yard as the officials want to call timeout and measure it. Here's a look again. Crenshaw just a broken play. Nobody to hand the ball to. He keeps it himself, almost makes the first down. It'll be tight. He picked up five. I think he's going to be short by about six inches. Short by about six five inches. inches. <laughs> Pretty close. That was a great call. <laughs> Coach Kidd a little concerned at this uh, at this moment. 13 minutes, 11 seconds to go. Eastern Kentucky, third down and about five inches to go inside the 45. Turnovers led to both scores early as Eastern Kentucky leads seven to six. Southern scored first, had the kick blocked, and Eastern got it back following a turnover inside the five. First down yardage picked up by Rick Burkhead, the fullback, who's averaging about four and a half yards a carry. And he picked up what he had to have and a little more, about a yard. So it'll be first down and 10, Can Eastern Kentucky. A little dive play, enough for the first down. Straight dive. No read, no nothing. Excellent job up front by the Eastern Kentucky offensive line. Burkhead, a big young man at fullback, six feet, 244 pounds. Crenshaw may be checking again. Now he calls time. Crenshaw takes a timeout. And so will we with 12.26 to go first half. The Colonels of Eastern Kentucky with a ball first and 10 and a one point lead. If Georgia Southern is able to come in here and pull off a victory, it would be only the eighth time that Roy Kidd has lost a game in this stadium. That's in 28 years of coaching. That is unbelievable. 73 wins, seven losses, one time for the Colonels. I asked him what he was going to do for an encore. He really didn't have an answer. He's done too much already. I guess he could go on the banquet circuit and make some money. First down and 10. Inside or just over the 45. Handoff straight ahead to Burkett. Burkett, he got one yard, and that's all. Number 77, Michael Morris, a left defensive end for Georgia Southern, makes the stop. Burkhead will run short yardage for you. He's just a big, strong guy that'll pound up in there for you. Nothing outside. Passing yards, zero. Georgia Southern. Eastern has 37 yards through the air. 
Second down nine. McCullum will come to the right side. And Ware goes left. Lester is hit and swarmed for a loss of about four, but let's check a penalty marker on the play. I believe we're going to get an offside. That staggered count, an excellent job by Crenshaw, caused the Georgia Southern defense to jump. Penalty will go five yards, and you still be playing a second half. Going back to the previous over, spot. Over the previous spot, five yards. Oh, he's over there. Right. Well, we heard the officials discuss it. Let's get the official word. sides on the defense, five-yard penalty, replay second down. That hurt Georgia Southern because they had just stopped Lester for a four-yard loss. I hope so. Instead, they get five out of it. It'll be second and four. Instead of third and about uh, 14, it'll be second and four. That's a big break for Eastern Kentucky. And the snap count is what did it. Second down, four inside the midfield stripe at the Georgia Southern 48-yard line. Quick opener up the middle. This is Lester, number 32. He has the first down inside the 45. And Lester almost breaks it. Here you can see Lester, a double team outside. A shoestring tackle keeps him from going a long, long way. Tim Lester, 5'10", 210. He can ramble. Lester's carried the ball 86 times. Scored six touchdowns for Eastern Kentucky. Actually seven now because he had one tonight. First down, 10. The 44. Crenshaw in trouble, dumps it off on the left side, intended for Burkhead, and Crenshaw was really wrecked. He was stoned and a little slow getting up. That bad shoulder he's got, uh, I knew the Georgia Southern would come after him. Steve Busoletti got back there. 6'3", 250-pound senior. It'll be second down, 10 for Eastern Kentucky. Delay, Lester bouncing through there to make the stop, number 61. That's Paul Carroll, a linebacker for Georgia Southern. And it'll be third down, Eastern Kentucky. Two great defensive plays by the Eagles. Here's what it's like to play defense when you shoot the gap like Carroll did here. He's not blocked. Two people up in front of him, he just shoots the gap between the two. Loss of two, third down, 12. There's a shot at Carroll. He's a freshman, six feet, 207 pounds. Playing at middle linebacker spot. And now Crenshaw requests another timeout. Time on the field, 9.50 to go in the first half. Eastern Kentucky has it third and 12 inside the midfield strike. We'll be back in just a moment. There's a shot at the Georgia Southern sideline. Tim Stowers, the head coach, the youngest Division I head coach in the country, in his second season at Georgia Southern, watched his alma mater. We were in his room today helping him watch Auburn and Southern Mississippi. And Southern Mississippi pulled off an upset over his alma mater, Auburn, 10-9. Among the surprises today in college football, he played for Auburn and played for Doug Barfield in the late 70s. Third down, 12. Eastern Kentucky at the Georgia Southern, 46. Lester went into motion. Crenshaw, he's got a man there. Where out of bounds at the 23. First down and 10, Eastern Kentucky. Where ran a fade route to the wide side of the field. Crenshaw. Delivers on on rhythm. You can see where they hit the uh, hit it in between the corner and the safety. Safety doesn't get over quite quick enough. 
That was a big play as we look at it from the end zone. And Ware with a nice catch and a great throw that time by Crenshaw. First down. This is Lester. Got a hole. Lester inside the 20 to about the 15 yard line. Gain of about eight. They've got Georgia Southern on the ropes just a little bit. They've got them off balance. Uh, they're running and passing game. They're complementing each other very, very nicely. Lester, it's well blocked up front, running a counter. Excellent yardage. We see it again. It's all Lester with Ashley blocking up front. Second down, about two and a half. Inside, it goes to Burkhead. First down inside the 10. It'll be first down and goal, Eastern Kentucky. Eastern Kentucky's got them a little on their heels. Paul Sickley. I have to think back to that offside penalty in this drive that really hurt Georgia Southern. That was crucial, especially it will be if Eastern Kentucky puts it in the end zone. It's at the 11. It's first down. They can get another first without getting into the end zone. Crenshaw tried to draw him off again. This is Lester spinning and fighting his way inside the 10. And I'll tell you one thing, if Crenshaw gets a whole lot more movement to his body, <laughs> they're going to call it on the quarterback and not, uh, not the defense. Watch your quarterback rock here. Watch Crenshaw. Oh, you can use your voice, but you can't use your body. Crenshaw's doing an excellent choice with his voice. <laughs> Bringing it up, but not the body. Gain of two, just shy of the eight-yard line. Tim Lester, 10 rushes, 31 yards. He scored a touchdown for Eastern Kentucky. Eight minutes to go. First half. Lester, not much there. Got back to the line. It'll be third down. Excellent penetration up front. Curtis Gordon made the stop from his node guard spot. Michael Perry, he was in the backfield for Georgia Southern, a linebacker. Lester actually lost about a foot and a half. It's back to the nine. It'll be third down. This is a big play right here for Georgia Southern. And a big play for Eastern Kentucky. Crenshaw looking, plenty of time, dumps it out here to Lester, got a block. He spilled at the five, it'll be fourth down. Great recovery that time by Georgia Southern. Rodney Oglesby and Nick Davis make the stop. Just a quick screen. Crenshaw just drops it off. You get it to Crenshaw on the open field, you feel like he'll do the rest. Actually, Tim Lester. <laughs> And to attempt a field goal will be Todd Duffy. There's Oglesby making the stop. This will be about a 23 yard attempt. Slight angle, as you can see. They want some points. He got it. Yes, sir. It's now a 10 to 6 Eastern Kentucky lead following the 23 yard field goal by Todd Duffy, who is now three of, or rather four of eight. On that quick screen to Lester, normally when you get the ball to him in the open field, he'll do the rest for you, but great pursuit by the Georgia Southern defense kept him out of the end zone. They did get points, and that's what it's all about. They wanted something out of that drive, and they got three. Georgia Southern has not been able to generate much in the way of offense. They have zero passing yards, not much more on the ground. Most of that came in their first possession. The flex bone is not very effective here early. But this is the same Georgia Southern football team that had Auburn down 17 to 3 at the half, 17 nothing at one time, but lost to the Tigers in the opening game of the year 30 to 17 are an explosive football team that can make it happen at any time during the game, so we're not counting them out by any stretch of the imagination. Bostick's got to get hot. They know he's the key offensively. 
Georgia Southern will receive. There's the kick, a high end over end kick. Bobbled, taken at about the seven yard line by Chris Wright. And he returns it shy of the 20 yard line. It'll be first down and 10, Georgia Southern from that point. And Southern has not had a really good field position that often in this half. I'll tell you one thing, Randy, they're flying around and, and, and hitting one another. Uh, you can feel it up here. I mean, there's some explosion down there. Let's get out on the sidelines again with Mike Keith. Mike. Randy, of course, on the last series, Daryl Hopkins was injured. He's got a stinger in his shoulder from a previous injury. He's okay. Hopkins is injury prone. That's why backup quarterback Albert Hundley, who scored the touchdown for Georgia Southern, is in there right now. He's going to play more, but Hopkins is expected to get back in. Most of the offense the first half for Georgia Southern has been generated by that man, number 35, Lester Eford, the fullback, and he rambled for first down yardage. Eford on the dive, and you've got to be able to stop the dive. If you can't stop the dive, you can't stop the flex bone. Eford gets excellent yardage. And I tell you what, he gets a bunch on his own. 5'8", 225, scoring drive for Eastern Kentucky. Eight up, six minutes, 25 seconds. 14 plays and 65 yards. Bostic blasted as he got to the 35. It'll be a gain of three. Greg McKee make the stop for Eastern Kentucky. A little misdirection that time, hoping the uh, linebackers would uh, miss key or get a false key. Second down seven clock moving just over six old oh, uh, just over six minutes to go first half. Terrence Sorrell comes wide to the right. Hand off to Eford good yardage as he crosses the 40 to about the 41. It's shy of the first down it'll be third and less than two as you get a good shot of Eford. Eford's built low to the ground low center of gravity. Runs awfully hard up inside. The dive, nothing fancy. But boy, I'll tell you one thing, with that much room, you can hit some yard. Right at you. Right in your living room. Eford does the rest. Third down, less than two, about a yard and a half. Full house, both ends tight. Hotly stopped at the 40, he actually lost about a foot. Great defensive charge by Eastern Kentucky. Eric Jackson, the linebacker, one of many to get there. Here we see a power set. Quarterback reverses out. You can see with this much uh, displacement and that much penetration, there's no way you're going to make the first down. David Wilkins there. We've called his name a lot tonight. Norton gets the punt away. It's going to hit. Take a... Eastern Kentucky bounce and the Colonels will put it in play from about their own 24 yard line. It'll be first and 10 with 438 to go in the first half. Colonels lead it 10 6. Tell you what, when you look down there, Randy, you, have to, you don't see it normally around the ball, but I tell you, when you're looking away from the ball, I saw three people flat of their back that time. I mean, they're tagging one another. This thing is real, real serious for a whole lot of folks. Including those ones trying to stay warm. It is rather chilly. Temperature will get into the 40s before we leave you tonight for Richmond, Kentucky. It will be first and 10 Colonels at the 24. Looking at a Georgia Southern four man front. Crenshaw gives it to Marcus Thomas. Nothing there. And I really thought coming in because both defenses have played so well that we'd have pretty much of a stalemate and that's exactly what's uh, happened. Uh, neither coach wants that big turnover although we've seen two and they've uh, turned into scores but uh, they're going to get after each other defensively and I really don't think that we're going to see too many big big plays. Both defenses are absolutely outstanding. Second down nine gained a yard that time. Crenshaw dropping back, dumping it, deflected beautifully by number 77 of Georgia Southern. 
Michael Morris. Michael Morris left defensive end. Mike. Great play that time by Morris. Crenshaw looks to throw, and Morris is in your face right there. Morris is an excellent athlete, can do a lot of things. Just a freshman, but I tell you what, thing, he's playing like a junior or senior. You noticed he's from the state of Georgia, as is at least 85% of these players for Georgia Southern. They recruit right down there in South Georgia. They get the good athletes. Draw play. Thomas to the 31. It's going to be shy the first down, but not by much. The draw play by Thomas got some good yardage that time, but Eastern Kentucky will have to punt it away. Here we see it again. And you can see a lot of white jerseys on the draw to keep Easton from that first down. Brian Barrett will punt it away. Coming after it. Almost blocked. Fair catch by Oglesby at the 33. Eastern Kentucky, or rather Georgia Southern, has blocked a punt in each of their first four games. They have four blocks in four contests. The OVC record is nine. That was set by Middle Tennessee back in 1988. That's Eastern Kentucky, rather. Chance Ward was the guy that came real, real close. Uh, I know they're going to go after it. They feel like they can get one, and before the night's over, it could turn it around. First down and 10 from the 33. It'll be Georgia Southern's ball with an opportunity to do something offensively. They have not generated much thus far. Bostic wanted to hand it to Eford. He kept the ball and lost about three. We've seen Georgia Southern make a lot of mistakes tonight out of the snap. Now let's go down to Mike Keith. Mike. Randy, the Georgia Southern sideline, they are furious about what's happening on offense. They're not getting anything done. Watch out for number nine, Derek McGrady. He's a backup quarterback, and he has been warming up and may go in for Bostic. Right now, they just don't know what to do, and as you can see, nothing's working. Second down 12 following the two yard loss. Bostic on the draw play keeps it himself. Got pretty good yardage out to the 36. The third down. And that was a quarterback draw all the way. There was nothing uh, out of the ordinary. He was going to keep the ball from uh, from the word go. Gain of about four. It'll be well we mark it at about the 35 and a half yard line. Clock moving 218 to go. It's third down and eight. I don't know why, Randy, but there looks like there's some miscommunication between the quarterback and his coordinator, whatnot, as to what he's supposed to do with the ball. Because right now, Bostic looked confused. Bostic gets away, does a nice job of scrambling, has the first down very near midfield. A big play by Bostic. That's why they don't want to take him out of the game, because with his great speed and quickness, he can make it happen from any way on the field. Just Bostic. a tremendous athlete. He's a little bit shaken up right here. He may have to come out. May not have a choice. He's shaken up and looks like we may see McGrady after all. An official's timeout as we and now Georgia Southern will request a time on the field after Bostic picks up the first down. Bostic got his bell rung a little bit I believe. They're attending to him on the near sideline. Bostic uh, he sprints to the wide side has to keep it because of the penetration but with the ball in his hands I'll tell you one thing he's awfully dangerous I know that they're not getting a, a real real smooth operation with that flex bone right now but when you see this you say to yourself hey we've got to keep him out there on the field he turns those busted plays into sometime points On the year, Bostic has completed 21 of 39 passes. Let's go back down to Mike Keith. Mike? Randy, the story is pretty simple. You can see Bostic right over here. He's just taking a shot to the nose, and they're working on it to determine if it's broken. So uh, almost like a boxer, they're going to have to stuff some cotton in it and see if he can go on. All right, there's a good shot. Bostic, we mentioned, had his bell rung, so to speak. <laughs> you got a big bell. <laughs> I tell you, they uh, they hit him a pretty good lick, but he made a nice he made a nice play that time as he picked up the first down yardage and kept it going for Georgia Southern. 
However, it'll be McGrady coming in at quarterback as they attend. You see the numbers on McGrady. Two out of eight for 20 yards in passing this season. He's carried the ball 16 times, has eight net yards. McGrady hands to Eford. He crosses the midfield stripe. It'll be third down for Georgia Southern. Or second down, rather, inside the midfield line. I didn't think they'd do anything uh, with his first play out there, but just give him a feel for the game. Second down, 123, clock moving. Eastern Kentucky with a four point lead early. Mike Keith will have more on what's going on down on the field and at halftime. There's some running room. McGrady stopped shy of the 45. Eastern Kentucky reacted very, very well. Tim Payton was there, among others. Era Jackson was there. Buddy, Mc, Buddy McGinnis also in on the stop for Eastern Kentucky. He had some running room, uh, Sonny, momentarily, but it filled up quickly. Tell you what, when those maroon jerseys, uh, when they swarm the way they have, and actually they've swarmed on both sides of the ball. You look for a moment like you've got a little bit of room, but there's so much speed and quickness out there on the field that they close uh, in a hurry. Georgia Southern wants another timeout as we look at the last play by McGrady. Who McGrady did a good job getting out of trouble. Did an excellent job scrambling. They flush him, he scrambles. But did an excellent job from the secondary also. We have a minute and three seconds to go in the first half of this football game. Eastern Kentucky with a 10-6 lead. Georgia Southern scored first after Eastern fumbled the opening kickoff of the ball game. They drove about 25 yards and scored. Had the extra point, however, blocked. Then from, from there on, it's been all Eastern Kentucky. You can see they're still working on Bostic. They want him back. Lester has a five-yard touchdown run for Eastern Kentucky. Duffy a 23-yard field goal to make it 10-6. It'll be third down, about five for Eastern Kentucky with a minute and three seconds to go first half. And you would think they'd have to put this one in the air. Derek McGrady, the lone setback. Efert, McGrady's pass almost intercepted. He was blasted back there by Randy Wardlow, and it was almost picked off by David Wilkins. It'll be fourth down, Georgia Southern. Wardlaw came from the backside and almost drilled McGrady right in the back. You can see it again. He almost gets the back shot. Wardlaw does a heck of a job coming from the backside. Norton's punt sails high and deep and will sail into the end zone. And Eastern Kentucky will get the football at their own 20 yard line. They have 52 seconds to work with, but I think they have only one timeout. If I've counted them They've correctly. They've used two already. One timeout remaining. They would love to, I'm sure, get into field goal range and extend this lead to seven. But I bet you don't see anything uh, too exciting uh, here with a four-point lead and 52 seconds on the clock. Well, you don't win over 200 games as a coach by being careless, that's for sure. Roy Kidd has done a tremendous job in his 28th year as the head coach of the Colonels. First down, 52 seconds to go. Crenshaw, the quarterback. And off straight ahead to Burkhead. And Sonny, you were right. They're not going to do anything but maybe just run the clock out. Coach Kidd's record over the years, he's been very, very conservative. And all he's done is win. He does what you have to do to get the job done. But he's not going to do anything that uh, is too reckless or, and certainly is not going to do anything that uh, would put his uh, football team in jeopardy here just before the half. We're at the 21-yard line. 19 seconds to go. Crenshaw. This is what they call save the game. That's what this formation is. Those guys are back there just to look for fumbles. Long count by Crenshaw. Goes to one knee. That'll be the last play of the first half. It's been a hard-nosed defensive football game. And the team you feel taking the Advantage of the most opportunities is going to win this one. So far, it's been Eastern Kentucky as they hold a four-point lead at 10-6.
over Georgia Southern here at halftime. Let's go down to Mike Keith on the sideline. Mike. Well, Randy, we've got Coach Tim Stowers. Coach Stowers, a rocky first half for your team, especially offensively. Well, we, we had a turnover right there on the opening kickoff and punched it in, got some points. Uh, since that time, we've kind of kind of been null and void on the offensive side of the ball. We've seen some things that we can do. Uh, we just got to come out and be more consistent in the second half. We gave them a cheap one uh, down there close. Uh, I think it's going to go down to the fourth quarter. I really do. Bostick's nose is not broken. He'll be able to continue? No, he's supposed to be able to come back in the second half. What are you going to have to do to get something started offensively? Have you thought about personnel? Well, we we'll have to mix it up a little bit. We just got to run our offense. You know, the fullback, we, we broke the fullback out a couple times, but we got to do more than that. We had a good play call right there. They had the backside and had a blitz on. They got us out. We couldn't quite get the ball to the back. Uh, you know, we just got to run our offense and make it work. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. That's Coach Tim Stower. Is his team, Randy, down by only four points in the offense in the first half? Just not good for the Eagles. All right, thank you, Mike. I guess you could call it power football between two power teams. Eastern Kentucky with a 10-6 lead over the Eagles of Georgia Southern tonight here in Richmond, Kentucky. We'll be back with our halftime activities in just six. We're at halftime in Richmond, Kentucky. We invite you to stay with us. Mike Keith will be back with our halftime activities in just one moment. It's a 10-6 halftime lead. Eastern Kentucky over Georgia Southern. We are at halftime. The bands are performing. It is a cool, crisp night here in Richmond, Kentucky. And, the, you know, the field was in great shape. We talked about that. And that has not affected each team's offense. It has simply been hard-hitting, hard-nosed, smash-mouth football. When you get two outstanding teams defensively like we got tonight, you've got great athletes on both sides of the ball. You're not going to see a whole lot of romping and stomping, and I didn't think we would, uh, and that's exactly what we've uh, witnessed here in the first half, and I don't think it'll be any different in the second half. Some of the players we talked about in the beginning have certainly proved to be the stars we thought. Wilkins has been, uh, we've called his name a lot on defense for Eastern Kentucky. Wilkins has been hurt, but certainly he hadn't played hurt. I know he's got a bad shoulder, but uh, great speed and quickness. He's been all over the field here this evening. Eastern Kentucky coming in. They've won 12 Ohio Valley Conference championships. You know, they're three and one. Three, all three of their victories have been OVC wins. In fact, uh, one of them over Middle Tennessee State, the team picked to finish second behind them in the uh, preseason poll this past year. If Eastern Kentucky can get by Georgia Southern here this evening, I don't see them losing another game this year. Looking at the schedule on paper, they finished 10 and one. They're going to be certainly one of the top two or three teams in the country. All right, let's go down to the field now. Here once again, our compadre, Mike Keith. Mike. Well, we're having some problems with the microphone on the field. We'll try to get that uh, taken care of for you in just a moment. Mike has uh, done a good job reporting on the sideline tonight. And uh, Eastern Kentucky has done a certainly a good job leading 10 to 6 in the football game. As we talked about earlier, Sonny Randall, the team that makes the fewest mistakes wins football games of this type. Each team made costly fumbles in the first half, both leading to touchdowns. Randy, I truly believe when you've got two outstanding football teams like we have here this evening, they're not going to beat themselves. They're going to make the other team beat them. And uh, when you've got that, uh, it might look a little conservative. But uh, realistically, I think, uh, you know, that's a real smart way to approach the game. Hey, we know what we can do. We'll do it well. If the other team uh, uh, can outdo us, that's fine. But we're not going to beat ourselves. You know, we've talked a lot about Roy Kidd, the head football coach. He's also the athletic director at Eastern Kentucky. And prior to tonight's uh, football game, Mike Keith had a chance to talk with Roy Kidd. Mike Keith back at the half here at Eastern Kentucky, and we're joined by the Colonel's athletic director, and you know him better as a football coach, Roy Kidd. Coach Kidd, you're one of the few football coaches in America that also doubles as an athletic director. How difficult is it to hold both responsibilities? Well, really, during the football season, it hadn't been real bad because I got good help. You know, I, I have an associate athletic director, Martha Mullins, who handles compliance, and Steve Angelusi is, is in charge of tickets and, and marketing. So uh, 
And then we have a business manager. So they, they've kind of let me do the coaching, and they're doing most of the AD work right now. The rest of the year, is time just the biggest problem for you, I guess? Right. I guess I found out, you know, at least uh, back in when I first got the job back in the spring and the winter, it was more or less meetings as much as anything, trying to get things together, budget, and, and make sure that all the sports are taken care of and doing what they're supposed to do. Just a lot of meetings, which I wasn't used to from, from that standpoint, you know. What's the biggest challenge of being an athletic director in Division I AA? Well, I think it's money. I don't think there's any question about that, you know, uh, trying to get the budget worked out and money. And, and uh, you know, right here, right now, there's a few things that I've noticed that we at Eastern need. We need to upgrade our facilities a little bit. I, I think people have gotten ahead of us, uh, not necessarily in football, but in some of the other sports. Other sports, it's got to be a big learning experience for you as a football coach. Well, well, it really is. You know, I've always just run the football program and taken care of it and, and taken care of my facilities and to see the things that, that we needed, that we got or tried to get. And, and, and really, when I became AD, I, I went over and started looking at the other sports facilities, such as locker rooms and, and things like that. And, and some of those things really need to be uh, brought up. We, we need definitely need a new weight room because we're kind of spread out. You know, each sport's kind of got their own small room. And uh, one of the biggest things we need other than some of the other facilities is a nice weight room. One of the big issues for all athletic directors in 1AA and for football coaches has been the fact that the last three championship games ending this year have been at Statesboro, Georgia. What have you thought about that? Well, you know, I, I think it's great for that standpoint of, of the finals there, but I, I don't like the particular idea, and, and the 1AA coaches don't either when we have meetings that Georgia Southern gets every game at home. I don't really think anybody deserves to play every game at home. I don't think that's a way to really uh, create a national champion. Uh, I, I respect their administration and their fans that's able to go out and, and to raise the money and, and, and to bid a home game. But I don't, I don't think games should be put on a bid basis. I mean, we're playing for a national championship. I think they ought to go and, and look at the teams, maybe seed them, uh, uh, which they do, I think, the top four. And then look at the facilities and the crowd and some of those things and kind of spread it around and not let any one team have a total home, uh, you know, a home game every time. Because that's a big advantage. I don't care what you think, but it is really an advantage from that standpoint. Coach Kidd, thanks for joining us at the half. Well, thank you. We'll be back with Georgia Southern's athletic director, Bucky Wagner, when we return in just a moment. I'm Mike Keith. Welcome back at the half. It's Eastern Kentucky leading Georgia Southern 10 to 6. We're joined, as promised, by Eagle Athletic Director Bucky Wagner. Bucky, an exciting time for your program as you're headed into a conference very soon, the Southern Conference. Our folks are very excited about the Southern Conference. Since we started football, we haven't had a league where all our teams, men and women, could compete. And now we can have rivalries in football, basketball, and all our women's sports. And our fans that have supported us so well deserve this, and, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. Now this spring, your baseball team will actually compete in the Southern Conference, and then next fall or next winter, you'll go in in basketball. It takes two years for you to get it in football. Why so long? Well, the scheduling in football is more difficult than it is in, in uh, basketball and other sports because we, we've all scheduled big games over a period of years, and adjusting those to a conference schedule uh, makes it a little more difficult. So the two years, 93, we'll be ready to be in, in the conference in all sports. Division one, more people are going into conferences. Division one, AA, they seem to be too. Why the move towards conference alignments from independent status? Well, I think that we're seeing a restructuring of the NCAA uh, all across the land. And one AA is no different. We're looking for like schools, schools that have similar academic programs as ours, schools that have similar uh, objectives. And we would like to get together. Perhaps the Southern Conference may even wish to expand to 12 schools like the SEC has so that we can have our own championship at the end of the year. And uh, I think you'll see over the next five to seven years just, just continual restructuring of the NCAA because of the, that's the direction the NCAA is, is moving us. Bucky, thanks for joining us at the half. Thank you, Mike. We'll be back with more right after this. The athletic director, now it's time to talk to Roy Kidd, the Eastern Kentucky football coach. You're up for your impressions of the first half. Well, it's been a defensive battle, it really has. And, you know, we gave them a break right on the kickoff, and they got a touchdown. We got a fumble, we got a touchdown. Outside of that, it's been a defensive football game. A lot of talk about Crenshaw and the shoulder, and maybe you going with Burkhalter. Any thought about changing? No, not really. As long as uh, Joey's doing a pretty good job, we're going to stay in there with him. Uh, the keys to winning this ball game for your team in the second half? Well, I think we're going to have to score. I, you know, I, I think they're capable of putting some points on the board. Our defense has played great, but I think our offense has got to get some more points on the board. Thank you, Coach Kidd. Good luck in the second half. Back to Randy. 
All right, thank you, Michael. Good job. Roy Kidd, the head football coach, sees his team, Eastern Kentucky, ahead by four. Let's take a look at the stats of the first half. Rushing yard 74 for Georgia Southern, 58 for Eastern Kentucky. However, here's a big factor, zero passing yards and only three first downs, Sonny, for Georgia Southern in the first half of play. Time of possession, a pretty good edge there for Eastern Kentucky by almost five minutes. Georgia Southern's got to be able to throw it a little bit, Randy. If not, uh, they're going to see nine folks on the line of scrimmage. Really, they've gotten off only one pass. It was incomplete. They're 0 for 1 in passing stats for zero yards. And it'll be interesting to see if Georgia Southern has Bostic in there. We take a look at some of the highlights now of the first half. Eastern Kentucky fumbled the opening kickoff after a 30 yard return by Brown. And Georgia Southern used that to get on the board. Brown made a nice return here, but Excellent then lost return. the ball. But when he bounces outside, you'll see him cough it up. Right there. They stripped it. This turnover leads to the score. Over the There's top. There's the touchdown by Huntley that put Georgia Southern up by six. Six nothing. Georgia Southern then coughs it up inside the five. That led to Eastern Kentucky's touchdown. The second half underway. And a fumble just like the first half. Let's see who's got it. Chai the 40 yard line. Georgia Southern got it back. And a big, big break. We saw that happen in the first half. Eastern Kentucky turned it over. However, Georgia Southern was fortunate enough to get it back and also to get pretty decent field position. A flag down further up uh, on the 20. Might be a clip there. Chris Wright. Returned the kick and did a good job, but coughed the football up about the 35 yard line. Almost identical to the first half kickoff. Clipping during the run back, half the distance, first down. Clipping penalty hurts Georgia Southern because they would have had the football right about the 40 yard line instead from the point of infraction. They take over first and 10 at their own 11 yard line. That was a big, big differential right there. And again, Georgia Southern starts off with very poor field position. Uh, it's hurt them most of the evening. Bostic is in at quarterback. He went out with a busted nose in the first half, but he's back now. Two receivers to the left, Sorrell and Belser. Bostic wants to throw. Comes out of there with it. Crosses the 10 to about the 13 yard line. Gain of about three. Ernest Thompson, David Wilkins in on the stop. Here we see Bostic sprinting to the wide side. He takes a peek, but he doesn't give it a whole lot of look. Just keeps the ball and turns it up inside and gets what he can. I still think he might have wanted to throw a bit when he started out, but he wound up keeping for about two and a half. Second down, Bostic in trouble. Forces it out to the 15, gain of about two more. Thompson again on the stop. Eastern Kentucky is so quick on defense, Randy. I really believe we're going to see some misdirection because they're flying around uh, so much defensively. That misdirection will tend to slow them down a bit and certainly might give uh, Georgia Southern a big play. Just shy of the 15, third down and six. Only three first downs for Georgia Southern in the first half. They may have to pass it here. Bostic on the quarterback draw, got back to the line, maybe a couple more, but that'll be it. And it will be fourth down, and once again, Georgia Southern unable to generate anything offensively. Of course, when you've got that field position uh, that they had, uh, it's awfully tough to open it up. Norton will punt for Georgia Southern. Standing inside is five. Low snap. Got it away, and it's a good kick. Driving Eastern Kentucky's There's Bird. There's a clip there. Two penalty markers fly. Bird goes out of bounds, shy of the 45. But let's see what the penalty markers are all about. You could believe they're going to walk 15 to the left of the screen. 
Had quite a few penalties tonight. I believe this is going to be at least the third clipping penalty we've had. Here we there see the is. punt return. And you'll see a Georgia Southern player get hit square in the back. Sean Little was the guy during who the run back 15 yard penalty first down. 15 you're, yards. You're in excellent position to make a play and then all of a sudden uh, your back gets turned and that's when you get uh, you know when you get drilled. It'll be at the 26 first down for Eastern Kentucky. Crenshaw back in at quarterback for the Colonels. He's gone all the way so far. Crenshaw hands to Burkhead might have gotten a yard that's all not much. Nick Davis Paul Sickley making the play for Georgia Southern from their linebacker spots. Gain of a yard second and nine. Crenshaw just reverses out. Hands to Burkhead on a dive. He's not going to pop anything big but he'll get you two or three. That time he got one and a headache. Georgia Southern if they are unable to overcome a four point deficit they will drop to two and three last year though they were one and three then one. 11 straight including Georgia the national Southern championship sucks. game. Woo. Crenshaw delay to Lester he's hit in the backfield he spins away got back maybe to the line of scrimmage. Shane Maxwell was there to greet Lester it'll be third down for the Colonels. Basic uh, just power football. Lester bounces it outside and you can see he has nowhere to run. They're starting to swarm. Georgia Southern is defensively four or five hats on the ball every time it's snapped. Third down eight. Two men wide to the right where Jason Thomas. Crenshaw back. Pass is caught by Tim Lester but it's going to be shy of the first down. In fact he was unable to get to the line of scrimmage so it'll be fourth down. Rodney Oglesby was there and Oglesby came dangerously close to picking I guarantee that off. I was just getting ready to say Randy he could have picked that ball up all he had to do is lift his head. They he might come after this one they block four. Oh no, they got the return on. High kick got it away Oglesby at the 35. Up the middle crosses the 40 and Georgia Southern will put it in play at the, about their own 43 yard line. 11 07 to go in a real defensive struggle in Richmond Kentucky the Colonels lead it by four and we'll be back in just a moment. Georgia Southern Sonny Randall with the best field position that I can remember them having in this football game except for that first turnover that led to a touchdown early. Let's see what they do with that good field position. They better do something here in a hurry. First down Georgia Southern at their own 43. Bostic on a keeper. Cuts back inside, gets good yardage close to midfield. It'll be a gain of about six, maybe seven yards. Fred Moulton making the stop for Eastern Kentucky. And if it's going to happen offensively for the Georgia Southern folks, this is a guy that's got to make it to. And he can make it happen. He'll break one here before long. Gain of six, second down, four. Bostic keeps again cuts back inside gets the first down and he goes inside the 45 it'll be a first down for Georgia Southern only their fourth of the football game and Bundy McGinnis made the tackle on the opposite to the short fakes the dive it's all Bostic looks to Pitts but he wants to keep it the whole way and does it gets excellent yardage. First down just over 10 minutes to go a lot of time in the third there's the big fullback Lester Eford. Go. It's very close to another first down. As he crosses the 35 down to the 34. It will be second down and about a foot. A straight dive. If you're going to take Bostic away then you got to take the dive. You take Bostic away you got to give him the dive. It's kind of choose your medicine. Darrell Belser comes to the left straight ahead 
Eifert gets the first down very close to the 30 and all of a sudden Georgia Southern is generating some offense. It's amazing what that good field position will do for you. Chad Bratsky makes the stop but not before Eifert gets the first down. That's number five for Georgia Southern. Eifert is running low to the ground with an excellent uh, center of gravity. Neighbors didn't get that extra yard. And off Eifert again inside the 25. Penalty markers on the play as the ball comes loose. However, we may have another penalty nullifying a nice run by Eifert. This is against Georgia Southern. Might be a motion. Georgia Southern starts three seniors on offense, five juniors, two sophomores, and a freshman. That's pretty young. Backfield in motion, five-yard penalty, first and 15. That's a big, big swing. They had that penalty a moment ago. The clipping penalty kept them out of field position on their last possession. So, again, penalties hurting Georgia Southern. As we look, five for a total of 26 yards. Eastern Kentucky only one. That was a clip, and it was for 15. Set the 35 and a half. First down. Bostic lost the ball. It's been recovered by Randy Warnlaw of Eastern Kentucky. Another costly turnover for Georgia Southern. 9.06 to go. Eastern Kentucky will take over at their own 36 yard line. We'll be back in just one moment. Another look at the costly fumble. You can see the exchange here. Bostic rides a fullback, but the fullback actually gets too much of the ball. And it pops out of there. Colonels have it first down, just shy of the 36. Checking. Crenshaw back to throw. Dumps it over here, incomplete. He threw that one away. He threw it away. I believe he had a receiver in the vicinity, but Georgia Southern said he may have grounded that ball. I'd like to look at that again to see if there was actually someone there. It'll be second down. The only people I saw there is ones on the stand on the sidelines. Crenshaw, he pumps. He's looking there. He has nowhere to go with it. Getting a lot of heat. That's in the stands. Nobody no receiver there. anywhere close. They got away with one there. 8.59 to go, second down. Ware goes into motion. Crenshaw fires it over here. It's caught beautifully by Ware at about the 43-yard line. It'll be shy of the first down, and Oglesby just missed another interception. I'll tell you what, Oglesby could have had two here at the start of the second half. Watch Oglesby as Crenshaw delivers the ball. Number 19, right there. I mean within an inch of picking it off. We see it from the other angle. Back behind Crenshaw. That was an excellent throw and catch. Ware comes up with a big ball, a big catch. But third, it could have gone the other way. Third down three. From the 43. Crenshaw hands to Thomas. Thomas does not get the first down. He stopped at the 45. It'll be short by about a yard and a great stop by Shane Maxwell of Georgia Southern. So the Eagles have held once again. It's fourth at about two. They'll have to punt it away. This is a carbon copy of what we looked at the first half. Great, great defense on both sides of the ball. Brian Barrett. Georgia Southern almost got that one, and he bombs one. This is Oglesby inside the 10. Nowhere to go. And once again, Georgia Southern is going to be stuck back deep in their own territory. 7.38 to go. A defensive struggle in Richmond, Kentucky. The Colonels continue to lead Georgia Southern by a score of 10 to 6. Talking about what a great defensive struggle it is, let's go down to the field. Mike Keith. Terrence Sorrell certainly has it on the line. He knows what a defensive struggle it is. Number 88 for Georgia Southern has caught a pass in 20 straight games. So far tonight, Randy, he has not caught one. Georgia Southern backed up. Again at the 10-yard line, straight ahead. The handoff was to Eifert. 
Got a couple. Ernest Thompson was there. So was Greg McKee. Ethan on the dive. We've seen it a bunch tonight. You either take the dive away or take the quarterback away. Eford has been practically all of Georgia Southern's offense in this football game. Second down, eight. Bostick got a little bit of room, crosses the 15, penalty markers down. That may have been after the whistle. It'll be against Georgia Southern. The indication is against Georgia Southern again. I believe it was a late hit. Well, we'll have to see what happened. Bostic, Georgia Southern is retreating, so it looks like it's against them. Bostic got a little bit of room, but Eastern Kentucky closed it very quickly. Clipping during the run against the offense, penalized them half the distance to the goal, replay second down. That's the third clipping penalty against Georgia Southern this football game. That was a wide receiver on a crackback block, which you can't have. You can see it for yourself. Good look at the clip. Second down, 13. They back it up to about the eight-yard line. Straight ahead, Eford crosses the 10 to about the 11, a gain of three, and Georgia Southern faced with another third down. Jackson in on the stop for Eastern Kentucky. And you would think that uh, the folks from Georgia Southern would put it in the air, but uh, I think they're yet to complete a pass, so this is not the ideal spot to uh, try to get your first one. Third down nine. Terrence Sorrell, Daryl Belser comes wide to the left. Bostic looking, keeps it, crosses the 15 out to about the 18 yard line. Didn't make it. It's going to be short. Bostic had nobody open. That's one of those coverage sacks. Uh, when he took a look downfield, there was nowhere to go with it, so he just kept it and got what he could. You can see Bostic looking downfield. Excellent coverage by the Eastern Kentucky secondary. Norton gets another high kick. Fair catch touched by Georgia Southern, and Eastern Kentucky will have good field position when we come back. Colonels will have it first down and 10 at about their own 41 yard line. They've got a 10 to 6 lead. Gives you an indication how chilly it is up here in Richmond, Kentucky. And it was about 80 degrees yesterday. And I would say it's in the 40s right now. <laughs> and dropping. <laughs> they have frost on the pumpkin by morning. Crenshaw, first down and 10. Eastern Kentucky with a four point lead. A lot of time left. Crenshaw pumps. And right oh, into the my. hands of Georgia Southerns. Number 10, Mark Giles. A costly turnover, and Georgia Southern gets the football back. I'll tell you what, uh, no question. Crenshaw, he pumps, tries to throw it in the seam, and I'll tell you what, he throws it right to Jow. I mean, there was nowhere to go. He'd like to have that one back. He actually checked at the line of scrimmage to go to that pattern, and he didn't have it. Giles is a senior who is probably more noted at Georgia Southern for blocking kicks. He's got about eight or nine in his career. Turnovers, not that many, but they've hurt each time. Bostic on a keeper. Crosses the 30 to about the 31. Not much there. You could call it rock em, sock em, smash mouth, whatever you want to call it, but I want to tell you what now. They're putting the helmets on one another, and they're flying around, and it's been this way all night long. And you're going to make the offenses look bad. That was a gain of that, actually a yard. It'll be second down nine. Bostic out of the flex bone. Here's a reverse, cutting back inside. Not really much. Penalty markers go down. Don Hudson, the slot back, was one of the was the ball carrier. Let's see what we have here. Another clip. 
That's four clipping penalties against Georgia Southern. And that will absolutely bring a coach to his knees. Clipping during the run against the offense, 15 yard penalty, still play second down. When you run the reverse like Georgia Southern did, you can see misdirection, the dive coming to us. Pitch back to the A-back going away. This is the wide receiver that cracks back the illegal back at the top of the screen. Just barely could see it. Second down, 24. Seems like Georgia Southern's been trying to dig out of a hole all night. 4.46 to go in the third quarter. Bostic pumps once. He's blasted back at the 15. Another loss. It'll be third down and three miles for Georgia Southern. Wilkins there again for the Colonels. Actually, Bostic got a great block out front, but he had nowhere to go. Wilkins again. Third down, about 23. It's at the 11. Coach Kidd. <laughs> Bostic. Shuffle There's pass. Shuffle pass didn't go for a whole lot. Bundy McGinnis was there. And for Georgia Southern, the ball carrier was Chris Wright, but Eastern Kentucky has held thanks to a penalty. Here we see the uh, shuffle pass. I'm surprised we haven't seen it earlier this evening. Norton skies another punt deep. Bird makes the reception at about the 33-yard line. It'll be first down and 10, Eastern Kentucky, 334. And again, the Colonels start things off with pretty decent field position. You like to run that shuffle pass against a team that really giving you a lot of heat. And certainly Eastern Kentucky has given Georgia Southern a good bit of that this evening. Here you can see the coaches upstairs trying to get straight with their real fine quarterback. Well, the one thing, Georgia Southern's defense keeping them close there within striking distance, and there's a lot of time left. Crenshaw, Lester blasts his way forward to about the 38-39. Gain of about eight yards. Paul Carroll makes the stop for Georgia Southern. Actually got about five, and we second and five. I know one thing, looking down there on the field, the Georgia Southern coaches are John at the officials pretty good. They've had four calls for clips tonight. Crenshaw gives to Lester. Lester crosses the 45. He's got the first down. And they got an injured player. Officials timeout. Georgia Southern player is hurt. Looks like Oglesby. Here we see Lester uh, coming back up inside. Gee, many Christmas. That looks a little late right there, but I don't see any flags. Hey, Rodney Oglesby, number 19, the senior weak corner for Georgia Southern, is the injured player. And actually, he was banged up coming into the game. Well, we talked to Coach Stowers. He had a lot of players that were shaken up. He was really concerned about it. He got. Uh, you know, Busoletti back, among a couple of others, and he had some others he was concerned about. He's lost two offensive linemen, and he's lost two A-backs. You don't lose front liners like that and it not affect your offense. They're still attending to Oglesby. Exactly three minutes to go in the third quarter. Let's take another look. See how Oglesby might have gotten hurt. 19 comes in late, 60. Right there. No, you couldn't see it. He's underneath the pile. But there at the end of the action, uh, I'll tell you one thing, <laughs> they're making it hot and heavy. Well, it's been that kind of football game. We're going to look again. There's Rodney Oglesby. Oglesby gets, oh, yeah, you can see it. He gets his knees bent back double. 
up underneath of him, and there's not a whole lot he could do. Tim Stowers out on the field. He's going to get up. He may be all right. He's going to sit out a while. Got a little hitch in his giddy up, but uh, <laughs> looks like he's starting to walk out of it. Where I come from, they call that day wide eyed. I've been wide eyed myself before. That Oglesby's getting off on his own power, but kind of slow. First down and 10 for Eastern Kentucky. They've got the ball at the 44. Crenshaw at the 44, first down. Ware comes in motion to the left. Lester hit and drop. Loss of about two. Paul Carroll was there. And Tough. now a penalty marker has been thrown. Well, I'll tell you what, there have been an awful lot of flags here this evening. Yeah. I believe that one's going to be after the play. And that's going to be against Eastern Kentucky. That'll hurt the Colonels because they lost a couple of yards anyway. That's a personal foul. Tack 15 onto that. Dead ball, personal foul against the offense. It'll be second down after the 15 yard penalty. LV McGinney, your referee. Let's go down on the sidelines now. Mike Keith has an update on injuries. Michael. The injury, he is going to be able to, he's not going to be able to play for the rest of the night. So again, Oglesby is out for the rest of the night with a knee. Randy and Sonny. Brandon Roselle is the backup to Oglesby on that side. Second down, 25. Big hole opens up out to the 40 yard line. Goes Eastern Kentucky. It'll be Rick Burkhead, the fullback, on a quick hitter. He got back a pretty good share of that yardage, but it's still going to be third down and a mile. Quarterback reverses out, gives to Burkhead on a dive, and dive. Burkhead just bounces it outside. You don't normally see him in the open secondary. See it again. Burkhead's back there with plenty of room. He picked up about nine. It'll be third down, 16 from the 39. And Drew Georgia Southern offsides. Good thing because Thomas was hit for a loss of about two. Crenshaw's done an excellent job with that non rhythmic count and has drawn Georgia Southern off several times here this evening. You can see him bob his head. You know, it's amazing that if you just watch the football, nothing's going to happen until it moves. <laughs> okay, what kind of cadence a quarterback has? Defense, offside, five yard penalty, replay third down. When you start guessing defensively, that's when you get yourself in trouble. And that's what's happened here a couple of times with the down people from Georgia Southern. Third down and 11. A minute and a half to go in the third quarter. It's a 10 to 6 Eastern Kentucky lead. The battle of one double A powerhouses tonight at Roy Kidd Stadium in Richmond, Kentucky. Kenny McCollum to the left side. Where is in a slot that way? Crenshaw steps up and drills it. It's intercepted by Georgia Southern. Jim Butiber picks off his third pass of the year for the Eagles. And once again, Georgia Southern picks it off and has good field position. Flags down. Let's hold everything. Crenshaw's looking to throw. Actually, he just overthrows the ball. Mutner comes up with an excellent uh, play here. It's going to be holding against Eastern Kentucky. They will refuse the penalty. That will give Georgia Southern the ball. Holding against the offense. Declined. First down, White. So Georgia Southern gets good field position here. They'll have it at the 43. Let's take another look at Mutimer picking the pass off. Ball just overthrown a bit. Receiver was open. Ware was open. Mutimer just comes up with the ball. A great play by the defense. That was the same area we saw Giles pick one off a few moments ago. A minute, eight seconds to go. 
Georgia Southern down by four. And they've got it at their own 43. Boston in trouble. Batted out of bounds. It'll be second down. Bostic, you can see there's some indecision here. He wants to throw it, but he's getting so much pressure. A little indecision there, and the ball's batted in the air with no chance to be completed. Second down 10 from the 43, just shy of the 43, actually. Bostic lost it. Wilkins is there. I believe he got it. Yes, sir. -y. He got it at the 40. And Wilkins has been all over the field for Eastern Kentucky. And that has to be at least the third time we've seen Bostic bobble that snap. Bostic, the ball actually, I'm not sure who it hit. It certainly didn't hit the fullback. Bostic never got the ball. Whether it was the center's fault to the quarterbacks, I'm not sure. But the quarterback never got it. 56 seconds to go. Eastern Kentucky at the Georgia Southern, 41. Crenshaw gives it to Lester. He's got three, maybe four. Down to the 35. And there's a lot of jawing going on out there right now. Might have had a face mask. Watch this Lester. Uh, I think there's a face mask without question. But they don't call it. Oh, yes. The Georgia Southern folks got away with one there. Second down five at the 35 and a half yard line. Nothing for Lester. It'll be third and five. Too much penetration up front. Among those penetrating, Steve Busoletti. That's going to be the end of the third quarter. We've completed three here in Richmond, Kentucky with your score. Eastern Kentucky University 10, Georgia Southern 6. We'll be right back. It's at the 36-yard line, third down and five, and Georgia Southern's defense has certainly kept the Eagles close to Eastern Kentucky, but how much longer can they hold them out? First play of the fourth quarter coming up. Third and five. Intercepted. Oh! Picked out of the air by Georgia Southern's Michael Berry. And there's a penalty marker thrown. That's going to be a dead ball foul. It'll be afterwards. It'll be against Eastern Kentucky and a big, big break for Georgia Southern. Michael Perry has really made some big plays here tonight. Crenshaw just getting, he doesn't get the ball up. It's a pick pattern. Look at Barry get in the air. He must have a vertical jump of 40 inches. <laughs> That's just a great, great play by a heck of a five defensive end. Almost looked like he was coming down with a rebound off that one. He got the ball, picked it right out of the air. Then you've got the penalty, and this should give Georgia Southern excellent field position. But here again, they've been unable to do much with it. It is a personal foul against the Colonels. And that's 15 big ones. We got a dead ball, personal foul against Red, 15 yard penalty, first down. Let's take another look. Let's see if we can see the 15. Whoa. You, 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 you know we love reward. Well, it was Barry got kicked in the head right there. Let's go down to Mike Keith, Michael. Randy, this is exactly what defensive end David Wilkins was afraid of. Speaking of the Barry interception, he claims that Georgia Southern is doing nothing to surprise Eastern Kentucky. He says there's no way they could score. The only way that the Colonels could lose, in his opinion, is if the offense turns it over and gives it to them. Well, we'll see. Georgia Southern's got it. Bundy McGinnis makes the stop. They get to the 40-yard line, a gain of three. It'll be second down, seven. 
you don't look for that kind of harmony though on your football team where the defensive folks are nailing the offensive people. I mean, you got to support one another whether they're moving the football or not. It'll be Sorrell coming wide to the right. Bostic back in trouble. Down he goes back at the 44. Bostic wanting to throw, but as he flushes or starts to scramble, they're about off the dive. You can see that, that there was no misdirection here. He was forced to come back to the strong side and to the wide side. It's at the 39 yard line, or rather the 44 yard line. Third down and 11. Bostic with a straight drop. Throws it, incomplete. The pass was short, intended for Belser. It'll be fourth down. Well, for this broadcast, some of the crew and staff were provided accommodations by Save In, a new chain with new options for the economy conscious traveler. It's where travelers stop to enjoy full service amenities at economy prices. You've tried other hotels and paid extra for things like breakfast, buffet, phone calls, or whatever. You don't have to do that anymore. Try Save In. These extras are totally free. Kick goes out of bounds inside the 20. And Eastern Kentucky will have poor field position. And we'll see if Georgia Southern can keep them there with 13-26 left to be played. A contrast to the game played between these two last year. It was 42-34 with a lot of offense. This year it's 10-6, but there's a lot of time left. 13-26 to be exact to be played in the ball game. I don't think Coach Kidd, though, believes that uh, this four points is going to hold up. It's at the just over the 20 yard line. Eastern Kentucky puts it in play. First down and 10. Ware comes wide left. McCollum will go to the right. Lester out of the eye, gets a yard. That's all. And the down folks for both teams up front have just done one remarkable job here this evening. Second down, about nine. Pickup of about a yard by Lester. Crenshaw gives to Lester around the right side. He's got the first down at about the 33. A pickup of about 11. Mark Giles in the secondary makes the stop for Georgia Southern. A little counter action, a little delay draw with the counter up front. You can see Lester, he doesn't wait for his blockers, he just gets it himself. Big first down by that man's team, Roy Kidd. That man's beginning to watch the scoreboard, watch the clock. The seconds tick away, 12 and a half minutes left. Straight ahead, Burkhead, the fullback gets two, maybe three. It'll be second down, Shane Maxwell on the tackle. Randy, I look for Georgia Southern to start to stunt and blitz and make, take some chances defensively looking for the big play. Uh, they feel like they got to get the big play on defense because right now the offense is bogged down. Georgia Southern as a team was only picking up about 250 yards in total offense. Going into this contest, Crenshaw, second down, Marcus Thomas got away from one man, still on his feet, first down into Georgia Southern Territory, out of bounds he goes. Jim Butimer makes the stop, but not before Thomas picks up about 16. Just a regular uh, power. Marcus just missed tackles. Marcus Thomas does the rest, does it on his own. Those missed tackles will let you go a long ways. Football rest right on the midfield stripe. First down and 10, Eastern Kentucky. Straight ahead, Burkhead gets nothing. Nothing is there. It'll be second down. A 
I'll tell you what, when you get three and out and three and out and three and out offensively, uh, that defense, they can't stand but just so much. And I think it's starting to take its toll right now. Clock moving, 11-21. That, of course, in Eastern Kentucky's favor. They've got it at midfield. Thomas to the left. Leon Brown's in the slot. Crenshaw gives to Thomas. He cuts inside. Gets down close to the 45. It'll be third down. I'm seeing seven and eight people on the line of scrimmage now, too. I think they're just daring Eastern Kentucky to throw it, which I don't think you're going to see them do. It'll be third down, a little more than five to go for a first down. Clock moving, 10-36, 10-35. Eastern Kentucky trying to win four of their first five. Lost their opener to Louisville, and they won three straight. All OVC games. Crenshaw. Thomas blasted from behind, a loss of two. Making the play, Steve Busoletti. Fourth down, Eastern Kentucky. Busoletti can make the big plays with the best of them from the backside. You'll see him running down from the backside. Marcus Thomas, Busoletti is right there with him. 9.53, fourth down. Georgia Southern wants to try to get a return. Barrett's kick. High, fair catch, signal four and made by Georgia Southern. Hudson makes the fair catch. It'll be first down Georgia Southern. And again, the Eagles have it in poor field position. 941 left. We'll be right back. The football, as you see, will be resting just shy of the 10-yard line. And how many times tonight? as Georgia Southern started from there. To the left will come, or rather the right, Darren Willis. Belser's on a slot that way. Bostic on a keeper, pitches back beautifully down that sideline. There's some running room. Eford runs over one man, gets up past the 43, the longest play from scrimmage. Glenn Williams finally caught him, and Eford really turned it on as he crossed the 20. He picks up about 33 yards. Bostic is the one that makes this play. You're talking about the last split second before he tosses the ball. He's almost on the ground when he tosses it to Eifert. Big Eifert does game. the rest. He runs over one man, but Williams hangs on to make the stop. First down at the 43. 9.17 to go. Bostic Keeps, gets about two, maybe three. As he crosses the 45, it'll be second down. Again, you're starting to get that misdirection to try to slow that Eastern Kentucky uh, flow down. They're flying to the football. He wants to pitch. Keeps it to the last split second. I thought he'd pitch again, but the Eastern Kentucky defensive back was right in the pitch's face. Couldn't go to the back. Second down, a little more than seven. Bostic straight ahead. Eford got to midfield. That'll be it. It'll be third down. Chad Bratsky makes the stop for Eastern Kentucky. And there have been some big third downs already this evening, but this is the biggest one I've looked at. And, uh, a whole lot of other folks. Clock moving, 8.19 to go. Third down, about four. Could be the biggest play of the ball game coming up. Bostic got away, got the first down as he's inside Eastern Kentucky territory, very close to the 41, and Bostic made that play himself. Just great athletic ability when he reverses out or spins out. Well, we said he got the first down. They're going to have to measure, but it's going to be very, very close. You can see him reverse out, and with his speed and quickness, does the rest himself. He got it. Got it by about a foot. 
First down, Georgia Southern into Eastern Kentucky Territory. The drive started just inside the Eagle 10. Clock moving, 7.51, 7.50. It's at the 46. Bostick straight ahead, Eford inside the 45, down to the 42. Era Jackson makes the stop from his linebacker spot. A gain of about four, it'll be second and six, and suddenly Georgia Southern generating some offense. Straight dive, no read, no nothing. When that quarterback has his head turned away from the line of scrimmage, you know it's just dive. 112 yards for Lester Eford. And about 33 of them came on that one play a moment ago. Bostic wiggles out of the arm of Ernest Thompson. Picked up about three. Inside the 40 goes Bostic. What Georgia Southern did is came back to the short side of the field. Normally a team with defense a wide side. Bostic just a speed option right at you. Cuts up field, gets what he can. Another big third down. It's at the 40, third down, four. Third down conversions, only three of 12 for Georgia Southern, but percentage is less than that. Two out of 10 for Eastern Kentucky. Again, a big play. Bostic in trouble, dumps the ball off. It's a ruled an incomplete pass. It'll be fourth down for Georgia Southern. Fourth down and four. Straight drop back. Looked like a quarterback draw. He wanted to throw the football, but when he couldn't run the quarterback draw, he tried to get rid of it. Big play for Eastern Kentucky. They were sending a lot of folks. It'll be fourth down and four, and Norton will punt for Georgia Southern. They're just going to try to pin him back. This is his 10th punt. His longest has been 48. Norton gets it away. He booms Excellent it. Excellent kick. Hit first about the five-yard line. They got just one-yard line. Yes. They Jordan. got exactly what they wanted. Tremendous punt that time by Norton. It'll be about a 46-yard kick. And Eastern Kentucky will get it first down and 10 inside the five. Touch first at about the five. But let's see where they're going to mark it. Let's see it again. And we do see it again. Touches a Georgia Southern player about the five yard line. It's at about the four and a half. The ball was touched first there, but still. First touch option. That's why it's on just about the five. Coach Kidd is livid. But I don't really know why he's upset. First down, dangerous territory for Eastern Kentucky. You cannot afford a mistake here. And the handoff to Burkhead, there is nothing there. Nothing except Curtis Gordon, Alex Mash, and company up front for Georgia Southern. It'll be second down and 10. Georgia Southern's hoping the defense can make a big play for him. 10-6, your score. It's been that way since the first half. Second down. Crenshaw pitches to Lester. He got a hole after the 10 to about the 12. He got about eight. It'll be third down. Nick Davis make the stop for Georgia Southern, and we've got a player shaken up. Toss sweep back into the short side. Lester with a whole lot of folks out front cuts it back. Gets him out of deep trouble and puts him in pretty good shape. Nick Davis, he bounces off. He's had a big night for the Georgia Southern folks. It's third down. About four, maybe a little less than four. The line of scrimmage will be the 11 yard line. He's got to get to the 14, maybe the 15. Oh, 
Whistle Movement. up front. Somebody moved. If it's on Eastern Kentucky, that will it was. Penalize. It was on the end of the line of scrimmage. Don't like to call numbers, but the tight end moved prematurely. Gonna move it back to about the five. Ball. Illegal procedure on the offense. Five yard penalty still third down. This is the last place you want a penalty. It's at the six yard line. It'll be third and eight. Where Georgia Southern was hurt by penalties earlier, that one hurt Eastern Kentucky. Long count, Crenshaw back to Thomas. He's blasted as he got back to the line. It'll be fourth down for the Colonels. Boy, Georgia Southern, I mean, they were dynamite on defense that series. Like a bunch of junkyard dogs. Well, that's kind of what their former head coach used to be in Georgia, Eric Russell. Not a real good kick. It's short, taken at the 39 by Georgia Southern's Don Hudson. We have four minutes, eight seconds to go in the contest. Eastern Kentucky clinging to a 10-6 lead. And we'll be back in just one moment. Georgia Southern gets good field position. Every time they get good field position, Sonny Randall, they seem to do something with it. Let's see here with 4.08 left. A little gut check for both teams. Bostic squirmed away, but not far enough. He got back to the line. It'll be second down. Chad Bratsky was there to greet Charles Bostic. They wanted to run the opposite, and they were looking for pits, but they didn't have pits. Bostic lost a yard. That was a busted play is what that was. Second down, 11. Bostic on the keeper, got some running room around the right side. That's Don Hudson, the slot back, and he gets good yardage inside the 35. It will be third down, but a good pickup by Hudson. Right at us. Speed option again. Bostic pitches. And right now, Eastern Kentucky's got about eight folks up there. Daring them to throw the ball. An excellent pitch. Hudson does the rest. Terrence Sorrell, as Mike Keith mentioned in the third quarter, had caught a pass in 20 consecutive games as we look again at that play. Hudson. Don Hudson. An A back who was a quarterback. They made him into an A back. Sorrell has not caught a pass tonight. If you're Georgia Southern, you might look for him here. Bostic with the ball, three and a half minutes to go. Third down. Bostic on the keeper. First down, First down inside the 30 to about the 27 yard line. First down, Georgia Southern. And with what Eastern Kentucky is doing defensively, they keep coming back to the short side of the field. Georgia Southern does because they're a man short back to the short side. Clock rolls, 323, 322. There's Roy Kidd. I don't think after 28 years the pressure is going to get to him. Not tonight. He's been there before. Most of the time they win. They lead by four. Bostic keeps, cuts inside, got about back to the line of scrimmage. That's about all. Wardlow, Wardlow makes Wardlow. a play from the backside. Wardlow actually runs him down from the backside. No game. Speed option. Wardlow comes from the left side. Runs him down. A great play defensively. When you run Bostic down, it's a great play. Second down, 10 at the 27. They come this way, Bostic to the 25, he got two, that's all. Let's go down to the sidelines and Mike Keith, Mike. 
Randy Lester Eford has gained 100 yards four times in his career, including tonight the first three times Georgia Southern has won. He told us just a minute ago that he was going to be the man to make a big play. Let's see if he does it on third down. And we have a timeout on the field. Two minutes, 19 seconds to go. Third you, down and eight. When we come back, Georgia Southern has the ball at the Eastern Kentucky 25. Third down and eight. Eastern Kentucky with a four-point lead, and Georgia Southern has the ball at the 26-yard line. Big play coming up. Bostic got some time, throws it, caught oh! and dropped by Terrence Sorrell, who had a chance to keep that streak of 21 straight games with a catch alive, and he couldn't hold it. It'll be fourth down and eight for Georgia Southern. They got a man-to-man -man coverage back here to the short side of the field. Sorrell ran a post-corner pattern, was wide open, and you can see this is what he should have caught up. He should have caught. Now, you, Georgia Southern has to go for it with 2.14 to go. It's at the 26. Big play here. As most every play has been big the last few minutes. Bostic on a keeper. First down. He got Nobody. the first down. I don't know. No. Eastern Kentucky says no, and I don't think he got it. He's short by about a yard. It looked like he made it. Eastern Kentucky will take over inside the 20-yard line. I thought he made it, then all of a sudden with the spot, he didn't get there. And let's take another look. Wasn't, wasn't even that close. He was a yard and a half short. Bostic, he wants to do it on his own. Has nowhere to go. Excellent coverage in the secondary. Well, they say a knee touched at the 20. Because may where have the ball was, right. he got there first down. Clock moving, 205. Crenshaw to Lester. Lester crosses the 20, got two. Georgia Southern calls time. They've got to gamble on every down now. I thought they called time. Well, they did, but I think the coaches said no. <laughs> Maybe not. 145. Yeah, are we going to want Roy Kidd at the end? <laughs> Clock ticking down, 137. <laughs> this has yes. certainly been a rock'em, sock'em affair. <laughs> well, we knew it would be. Two winningest teams and one double-A football leading tonight. They run wide, Lester spilled at the 20-yard line. It'll be third down. Now, Georgia Southern steps in and says, we want time with a minute 19 to go. And if Georgia Southern forces Eastern to punt the ball, you can believe they'll have 10 folks on the line of scrimmage. They've been known to block some kicks, and the guy you'd have to look at would be Mark Giles. He's, Hope, they blocked four already this year. Hope you've enjoyed our broadcast tonight. Producer Dan Shoemaker, our director has been Skip Hill, Spruce McCree, our audio by Gary Mosley, and you see some of the other folks that made this telecast possible that we hope you've enjoyed tonight from Richmond, Kentucky. It has been a lot different from the game last year at Eastern Kentucky won 42-34 down in Statesboro. That particular game snapped a 38-game home fill winning streak for Georgia Southern. This game, all defense. I really felt from the outset because both defenses had played so well, it might be one of these games, and that's exactly what it's turned out to be but I don't think he had to be any genius to figure that out. Third down nine, a minute 19 to go. A lot of things can happen in a minute 19 seconds. Lester stopped at the 24. It'll be fourth down, and Georgia Southern steps in again to call timeout with a minute 14. So it's not over yet by any stretch. I'd like to dedicate this to her one of them. <clears throat>
You count them on the line of scrimmage and see if you don't hey, count what's ten. Up? What's up, y'all? It's at the 23-yard line. They can control the ball on offense. They certainly could as long as uh, Eastern Kentucky had the ball, and I'm sure that's why they Everything took their last they time out. Well, you got to feel they're coming, and if you look at Eastern Kentucky, most of the people up there are backs ten. and receivers. There's 10. <laughs> Not any linemen in there. They're, they're all trying to coming. go off the right side, off the right. Giles is down at the bottom. Keep him in the middle of your screen. He there. got the kick away. Barrett's kick fielded by Hudson at the 40, out to the 50. Out of bounds he goes with a minute and five seconds left. And I don't know if Georgia Southern has any timeouts. I don't think they don't have think. any left. So they've got to do it all and stop the clock as they go with a minute five seconds. Which means, Sonny, they're going to have to throw it, something they have not done well. <laughs> Whether they want to or not, there's no choice. You have to put it in the air. First down, inside the midfield stripe, Bostic, good protection. Drop, that's going to be a fumble. Eastern Kentucky's recovered, and that will nail the coffin. Bundy McGinnis was there for the Colonels. but never has the opportunity to throw the football. Another turnover. That's four turnovers for Georgia Southern. Five, correct me. Five turnovers for Georgia Southern. And Eastern Kentucky, all they have to do is fall on the ball a couple of times and it's over. Eastern Kentucky will win for the fourth straight time. They will be four and one. And Georgia Southern drops to two and three. And here we see save the game. This is what this offense or what this formation's called. They know they can just run it out because Georgia Southern can't stop it. Crenshaw goes to one knee. Let's take a look at that fumble again by Bostic. No question who comes up with it. Yeah, the ball comes free, but it was already blown dead. Clock starts up, 36 seconds. In this save the game offense or the formation they line up in, they just want people in there with good hands in case the ball pops out, they can recover it. That's all they're doing is looking for the ball to pop out. There you see the time. Crenshaw, and that'll do it. That's going to do it. Eastern Kentucky has won a huge defensive struggle with defending national champion Georgia Southern 10-6 to tonight here in Richmond, Kentucky. A hard-hitting football game won by the Colonels over a tough, determined, but young Georgia Southern football team. And we'll be back in just one moment. Welcome back to Eastern Kentucky, where the Colonels have knocked off Georgia Southern 10 to 6 for Coach Roy Kidd. Victory in his career of number 221. And Coach, that was physical. It was a physical football game, and our defense played great. You know, we made some bad mistakes, particularly the second half with our offense. Not only penalties, but a couple of interceptions. And our defense just played great, and that's what won the game. You know, you went on defense, and we certainly went on defense tonight. And they got a heck of a defensive team. When you look at this and being halfway through the season now and four and one, you can't let this victory get overblown, can you? That's right, because we got a tough Western Kentucky coming in here next week, and that's our big rival, so we got to be ready to play again. Can this team go all the way, in your opinion, as you look at it now? Well, I think we got to continue to play the great defense, and, and then we're going to have to get our offense going a little bit better. You know, we, we didn't throw the ball very good, and we made some terrible mistakes, you know, with some unnecessary penalties. You know, we just kind of lost our composure a little bit there, and 
we can't do that and expect to move the football. But you got to give Georgia Southern credit. And I tell you, their defense is for real also. Pretty good two and three team. It really was. You know, both offenses, we gave them their first touchdown. We never really gave it to them, but we gave them the great field position, and they gave us super position to get our touchdown. And then after that, it became a defensive battle. And, you know, and our defense made so many big plays. God bless them. They did a super job. Especially down there at the end after the short punt where they took over at the 38. That was huge. Well, you know, we that's right. And the, we punted out of the end zone there. And, you know, we lost our field position basically because of an unnecessary penalty over here. And we could have gotten a first down and eat up a little time there. And then we got punted out of the end zone and gave them great field position. We put them in a four down zone. And, and then they, uh, you know, and we held them. And then even they hold us and use our timeouts and the defense come through again. 28th year, you don't get used to that kind of pressure ever, no, do you? No, you sure don't. I believe it's nerve wracking on the sideline too. Coach Kidd, thanks very much. We appreciate it. For Coach Roy Kidd, victory number 221. And as we throw it back up to Randy Smith and Sonny Randall, this was a physical football game, no doubt about it. Sure was, Mike, and thank you. And congratulations to Coach Roy Kidd, winning the football game 10 to 6, a hard-nosed football game. And you know Georgia Southern, 2 and 3 now on the year. Eastern Kentucky moves to 4 and 1. You have to feel like the pressure is really on Georgia Southern. They're the two-time defending national champion, and they're probably going to have to win six in a row to get back in the playoffs. I don't know that they can do that, Randy. I really don't, unless they get their passing game straight because uh, you've got to throw the ball a little bit in order to have a chance to win, and they couldn't do that here tonight. I think poor field position and the center quarterback exchange really did hurt uh, Georgia Southern here. This I don't want to take anything away from Eastern Kentucky. They played a great football game, and if you like defense, uh, you like a hog and slop here tonight because, brother, they really got after it. You know, Eford had 112 yards unofficially on the ground. Usually when he gets 100, they win. It was not the case, but they don't play Eastern Kentucky every night. Well, you can't run the dive and think you're going to win a football game, and that's what Eford was going to give him, uh, nothing but the dive. Uh, but he kept him honest. Uh, when you run the dive or you run the option, you take one away, but you can't take both of them away. Could be the play of the football game, the fumble at the end of the contest as Bostic went back to throw. They had a chance. They, they had really their did. chances no and were not question. able to capitalize. No question. And when you look back, uh, you know, there are a lot of ifs, ands, and buts. Uh, but uh, if every day uh, if they were candy and nuts every day, it'd be like Christmas, too. But uh, that just doesn't happen. You see Roy Kidd, he's uh, extremely happy and should be. Uh, they played a great, great football game. They really did. Certainly not to take anything away from them. Uh, you hate to see either team lose uh, when they play the way they did here uh, tonight. You know, Coach Stems, Tim Stowers of Georgia Southern is probably going to look at one other play that cost him the football game. That's when Georgia Southern fumbled inside the four and Eastern Kentucky scored there. They don't score there. Georgia Southern wins the ball game. Well, you can look back, and I tell you what, uh, there's several plays, I think, that uh, could decide it. That, game, that play was as big as any of the game. It was a great football game. We knew it would be coming into this one. We may have expected some of us a little more offense, but just a tremendous defensive struggle between the two 1AA powerhouses in college football. Georgia Southern, the two-time defending national champion and two-time champion, Eastern Kentucky. Eastern looks like uh, they could be a real contender for the national championship. They're ranked third, and this victory right here would uh, convince a lot of folks of that. Randy, I don't see them losing the rest of the way. When you look at their schedule, I think they'll end up 10-1, and one, and certainly they got to be one of the top three teams in the country. They've won 12 Ohio Valley Conference championships. Uh, Roy Kidd in his 28th year as the head coach, such a tremendous job. We can only say that so many times. Well, Roy Kidd Stadium, uh, <laughs> I know he's done it for a long, long time, and I'm sure, uh, you know, he'll continue to do it for a long time. Eastern Kentucky winning four out of five, their fourth consecutive victory. They went over Georgia Southern tonight, 10 to six. For Mike Keith and Sonny Randall from Roy Kidd Stadium in Richmond, Kentucky, this is Randy Smith saying good night, everybody.